ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, tonight is July 15th, 2024. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I am the chair of the board. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome the other members of the board and ask them to please introduce themselves, starting with uh, our uh, board member who's joining us remotely. Steve Revelat, good evening. Uh, Ken Allow. Shana Corman Houston. Eugene Benson. Thank you. And we have uh, the director of the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. Uh, Claire Ricker joining us this evening as well. So let's move right into our first agenda item, which is a review of uh, two sets of meeting minutes. We will start with the meeting minutes from June 17th, 2024. Uh, and I will see if there are any additions <coughs> or corrections, starting with uh, Steve. Uh, no changes here. Ken? No changes. Shana? None. Jean? No changes. And I have no changes either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 17th, 2024? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Ken? Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the meeting minutes from July 1st, 2024, and we will see if there are any additions and corrections, starting with Steve. No, no changes. Thank you. Ken? No changes. Shana? None. Jean? No changes. And I have no changes either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from July 1st, 2024? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Ken? Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I am a yes as well. The meeting minutes from uh, July 1st, 2024 have been approved. All right, let us move to our second agenda item, which is a discussion of uh, the development at 1500 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, this will not be a, a formal hearing, but rather a discussion between the board, the Department of Planning and Community Development, and the uh, developer, and I believe your, your architect who are here. So um, I'd invite you both, please, if, if um, you could step closer to the mic, and I will first turn this over to um, Director Ricker uh, to, uh, to kick us off. Thank you very much. So <coughs> this is uh, 1500 Mass Ave is a project that this board um, approved with conditions on November 2nd, 2020. Um, it is one that has run into um, some construction issues on site, including evidence of ledge and some other um, uh, uh, construction uh, challenges, but um, I think most um, you know, of, of most interest to, the, to this board is um, the situation around the inclusion of an ADA uh, unit. Um, I believe this board, when it issued its decision, um, had said, uh, you know, solely commercial uh, use on the first floor um, with residences above. Um, I believe Mr. Danucci is here this evening to discuss um, potentially moving that ADA unit to the first floor or other um, any other recommendations uh, or any other comments the board may have uh, about um, the, these items. Great, thank you. Um, and so that I understand the request of the board for the discussion is the um, discussion around the board's willingness to reopen the special permit to, to consider uh, alterations to the conditions of the special permit? Is that my understanding of yes, what the ask right. is? Okay, great. Um, so with, with that clarification, um, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to okay, you too. Great. And if you wouldn't mind um, just introducing yourselves and um, you know, sharing your, your thoughts on how you'd like to frame the discussion with the board, please. Thank you. So my name is Darren Danucci. I'm the owner of the project. Uh, we received our approval uh, through your board after going back and forth, meeting conditions and getting our permits from the town of Arlington to build. We built the building essentially 80% complete. I got contacted last June right around here from the new commissioner, Michael Champer, stating that there were some questions and concerns about the permit of the project. So at that point, Michael had asked me, he said, you're gonna need to reach out to the Architectural Access Board in Boston, explain your situation of where you are and find a solution. 
we started that process and Monte helped me with um, code consultants and you know things that are out of my wheelhouse. We went back and forth with the architectural access board several times. We had a few meetings and a few hearings and we finally received an approval from them that our unit that was proposed on you know half of the first floor which was essentially the same unit we talked about way back in the beginning and then we got the information from the commissioner that we didn't need to do that because you know he thought it tripped on five and um, Ken and Monte thought it tripped on four and we just went with the hierarchy you know authority having jurisdiction said you're okay so we built the building um, the short story is we're here now it's, it's been quite a hardship you know it's it's um, it's past 300 K between bank costs and you know loss of rent and we have the solution we've done the due diligence I carry the Commission as support to this um, I talked with Mike you know through the whole process and, and he supports this proposal that we you know submitted to you guys as well as a solution to completing the project and um, unless I miss something Monte that's pretty much it sounds, sounds accurate yeah. okay Great, thank you. Um, so I think the discussion amongst the board is uh, the willingness for the board to uh, reopen the permit. Um, the ask is, as I understand it, to uh, eliminate one of the uh, commercial units that was permitted and to replace it with a single accessible unit um, in its current configuration. Is that yes. accurate? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I know that as a board we had a significant discussion around the percentage of um, business use space um, that we were looking to, to see in this, this property. Um, and um, that was a large part of the, the decision, the, appro the approval process, as well as the, the facade approval. Um, so I will just uh, remind the board about that. But I will start with um, Jean, as you were on the, now also just for um, everybody's, uh, for the record, just let everyone know too that we have two members who have since turned over since that okay. original board uh, decision, just so that everyone is aware, um, neither Steve Revelak nor um, Shana Corman Houston were on the board at that, at that time. So just so that that's clear. But we'll start with Jean for your thoughts around um, opening the special, reopening the special permit to consider this alteration or to um, upholding the existing um, requirements of the special permit, which is to maintain two business units. On yeah, the I floor. understand we are, we have not reopened this. We special have not. Permit. So the question is, does, is the board I, willing I would, to consider? I would not make a decision until I see a formal submission by the applicants. And then I would make a decision at that point whether I think it's appropriate to reopen um, the permit or not. Um, there are probably some things I say it's appropriate. And if they're going back to the proposal we said no to, I'd be unlikely. But I don't want to say that for sure until I see the submission. So my question to you, Jean, would be, um, and again, we'll go to the other board members for their initial thoughts as well. Um, what, given that it would be a, an amendment to this special permit, they do have a layout diagram included that my understanding is was shared with the Architectural Access Board in light of um, I think you know one thing the board could consider is would they need to come back with a full new special permit in, in lieu of that as an application? You would want to see. Uh, can, can you describe what? It, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What would you What would you consider a full? Um, I'd like to submission? see what their proposal is going to be: architectural drawings, etc. Okay. Uh, Ken, I'll go to you next since you were on the board during the initial um, hearing. Uh, looking at these um, preliminary plans, uh, I'm okay uh, to reopen the, uh, the hearing uh, for this uh, and to talk about their modifications. Um, these modifications here, I have some questions for, 
Uh, I'm not sure is an appropriate time now to ask some questions, or do you want to stay on the topic of I just think if reopening? It would, if it would um, help you make a decision as to whether or not you would um, be in favor of opening the uh, the special permit, reopening the special permit, then then yes. Uh, it would. It okay, would, great. It would, then it, please go it, ahead. It just, um, when we uh, approved this project, the parking spaces uh, were rearranged a little differently. And um, the mechanical room and the bicycle storage was relocated differently. Uh, what I see right now is it's the mechanical room and the bicycle room flip-flopped. And I'm not asking for reasons. I'm just saying it is, okay? And by flip-flopping it, you have to create a corridor along one side of the building to get access to the stair, uh, to the bicycle room. Um, that takes up quite a bit of valuable land or space, not land, space on the first floor. So, do you, so there's less office or less commercial space. Um, is there any way, uh, or is it too late now because all the mechanical systems are in already? You can't flip the the mechanical room and the bicycle back to where it was originally shown to us so that you can get rid of that corridor that runs the whole length of the, of the unit so the unit can be pushed over and then take that space and we donate it back to the office space and you know there's more there's more office space for you to rent now i'm, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to say now you got non usable non rentable office space there or non rentable space is that something when you come back with formal submission, is that something you're willing to look at? I'm going to answer that. <clears throat> um, I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so I think that part of the issue has to do with the topography over there and what uh, Mr. Danucci experienced with the ledge. So I think it, um, you know, the parking is up much higher and prevented the access from the rear of the building to those spaces. So the only way that we could access those spaces was from the side of the building. Um, that's the only point that was low enough to be able to circulate around to the back. And also, I think it was something that we had looked at in terms of providing access for uh, people to store their bikes in the back and things like that from pedestrian sidewalk. So it had a lot to do with topography. It was, by and large, topography that really kind of necessitated that. Um. Because of the ledge, it forces the the rear parking lot to be higher up. That's my understanding of what you're saying. Yes. Okay, which then precluded you from putting a ASAC access from the rear parking lot into the bicycle storage room, so you had to do it from the side. Correct. Is there other ways of doing it such that you can recapture that, uh, I don't know, was it three feet by 40 feet? That's quite a bit of office space that could be reallocated back to the office. I mean, we're more than I mean, we're more than happy to look at it. Off the top of my head, I couldn't. But that's something you'd be willing to look at for the resubmission, because this is not a formal submission here. Yeah. I'm just saying that might encourage some of the other board members saying you've tried your best to maximize mm -hmm. the office space because you're asking us to accept a reduction in office space in this mixed-use building. I'm just trying to say, can you go yeah. a step further and get more? back instead of just cutting in half and getting rid of all the, uh, half of the office space and, and say this, this, this is housing now. You try to, you know, maybe say you got down to 40% or something like that. Mm -hmm. It might be something that's more um, palatable. It'd be more palatable for me. I'm not gonna speak for the other board I, members. I mean, I, I don't wanna also put words in Mr. Danucci's mouth. I, I'm happy to take a look at it. I don't know 100% the infrastructure that is in place that may be in conflict with us trying to do certain things, but yeah. I will, I will It's a question on my part, yeah. okay? Yeah, I will And, and of course, you, your willingness to approach that, that's all. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take and then uh, the reasoning why the parking spaces are the way they are, we had four full park, full-size cars. Now it's all compacts. Uh, I think that that is, we can provide some, um, commentary on that. I think that actually we did in some of the other 
information that we provided, there was, a, uh, I believe, an email exchange and an approval from Rachel? Mm -hmm. No, Jenny. Or not Rachel, sorry. Jenny. Jenny. Right. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny, sorry. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah, nothing, um, nothing was changed without approval. There were a few things along the way that were administrative changes, and um, we have all the support for that. Yeah. I'm not sure Jenny has... Correct me wrong here. Um, authority to make those changes. I think what we would need to do is just, again, if we were to reopen the permit, okay. I think what we would need to do is see that documentation and re review okay. it and understand yeah, the, the, the process. That. That yeah, we didn't make any moves without contacting the right. uh, I certainly believe you. Right. Yep. Um, and then uh, on the original approval, I was really big on getting the trench drain in the end of the driveway so water won't be spilling onto the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Will that be put in? Absolutely. Because uh, yep. it's not now. No, it's not in now. We're waiting for final grades. That's why the fair, project fair enough. I'm, I'm not asking, you know, yeah. I just, I, I, that was one of my sticking points at that time because I didn't want the water from the whole parking lot going down that driveway, yep. across, across the sidewalk and into the street. Yep. You, know, you ever been in a store, uh, heavy rainstorm on Park Ave? You know, when it comes down the, uh, the parking lot there and it goes, goes right across Mass Ave, it's just crazy. Well, in, in our project and the one next to us, before we did our final subgrade, there was a lot of water and ice, and we solved all ours because we brought a lot of crushed run in, mm -hmm. but we are going to put that drain in. We do have our underwater uh, system in. We've been working with uh, Will Copperthorne on that, so that's installed. It's just we're waiting for final approval before we go with any asphalt. Great. I, I'm satisfied, I, but I, I am willing to reopen it, okay? Okay, thank you, Ken. Um, before we move to Steve and Shana, since I was also one of the, the three on the original. Um, yeah, I'm going to say something afterward in response to what Ken Okay, said. sure, absolutely. Um, I, I, am, um, I was very much of the mind at that time, and I'm still of the mind that a single, very small, um, office unit is barely a nod <laughs> to making to to this being a mixed use property, mm -hmm. um, and so I I would not be in favor of reopening the special permit because I I think that the first floor needs to remain um, a business use. I think that. There are a few options, you know, including modifying the building to add an elevator, which again, I completely understand is, is an expense and a hardship at this point. You know, whether or not the access board would consider a Lula um, to, uh, on the rear of the, of the property to the second floor to provide access to an accessible unit on that floor or decreasing the number of, of units would be a solution that I would prefer um, in lieu of eliminating the second commercial space on the first floor. That's that's my current, um, current feeling. And to do that, we would not need to reopen the, the special permit. That is something that could be reviewed and approved together with the um, building inspector. So again, we'll sh each share our perspectives and then have a discussion as a board. But um, since I was on the original board that uh, reviewed and approved this, I wanted to make sure that was clear. So Shane, I'll go to you next. Um, I would be in favor of reopening the special permit, but um, I also have concerns about that ground floor commercial space and and um, think that the studio unit is probably not a great unit, especially if it uh, maintains the facade, uh, the, the intended commercial facade. Um, so I would, I would like to see an exploration of, um, of other options to, um, to make upper level units accessible um, uh, through floor lift for example, um, might might be one opportunity, um, or I don't know. You've got you've got a good team there, um, but but I, I would 
I would hope that um, a thorough exploration would be would be available. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I, I think I have three questions, um, and, and one is is one of the first is a little uh, rudimentary. Um, an accessible unit is that restricted in the same way that say an accessible parking spot would be restricted, or can it be rented to uh, anyone? Uh, because the development is so small, it's not required uh, the accessible parking space. If that's your question. I believe Steve's question was, uh, can the accessible unit be rented to anyone or does it need to oh, be? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, it, it is not restricted yes. in terms of who parking. it can be rented to. Yes. Nope, that's yep. fine. Mm -hmm. I, I know that there's some sound issues and I appreciate you bearing with us. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, and um, in terms of, you know, I was thinking in terms of, well, what are the, what are the alternatives to not reopening? And I, I, I think, um, you know, the summary of that would be a, an internal reconfiguration. Um, as, as Ms. Embry alluded to. I, I was wondering if the, um, if Mr. French and Mr. Danucci, you can at all had made consideration of uh, doing office space on the first and second floor, so one over another, um, or you know, basically replacing one of the four residential, existing residential units with an office. I guess the answer to that is we could have done any of that if we had the opportunity. But when we received our permit, we, we built the building structurally, and it's far along where four units are completed, with the exception of appliances I just held off on. So to go backwards now to try to change it to, you know, to a two two unit townhouse above commercial, we certainly could have did that if we had the opportunity because we collaborated with you since day one and prior to. Now that we're here, we don't have that option and we don't have the option for the lifts because you might as well just take the building down at this point. There's no configuration to put a Lula in at this point. We've been well, through it. And, and I guess just to expand on what Mr. Danucci is saying, so that was part of our process with the Accessibility Board, uh, the State Access Board. Um, we had gone through some iterations with them in terms of lifts and other solutions to try and um, maintain the commercial space. That I, we knew that that was a primary goal for some of the um, urban, you know, kind of fabric of the area. Um, and those, I think, it was part of some of the information that we provided that was denied. Um, because then that would trigger the building, the entire building needing to be accessible. Um, so once you, once you provide elevator access, you, all units have to be accessible. So um, that was part of our process in going through how do we do that, whether we blanch onto the side of the building, whether, you know, is there any opportunity to put it within the building, but because of the, the, the nature of the construction and how the, how the building has progressed to this point, there was no viable, well, there were ways to do it, but the cost of it was just astronomical. And so that was part of the discussion with the access board. Um, and ultimately, in doing that, it triggers a lot of different things um, that would make the whole building have to comply, which was excessive. So if I could just ask one more, uh, one more follow-up question on that. I, um, I'm not terribly familiar with, the, uh, with 521 CMR, but I tried to go through it over the, over the weekend. And my understanding was that a four, at, at the point of having four dwelling units in a building, um, you know, either if the building had an elevator, they um, all had to be accessible, as Mr. French just explained. But um, if it was not a, a, an elevator, only the ground floor unit needed to be accessible. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm wondering if you, I just like an explanation of how. Um, you know, to me, my, at least my first reading, the building didn't have an elevator. There were no residential units on the uh, ground floor. And I'm just wondering where that accessibility requirement was triggered. It, just for my own knowledge. So it, it, um, it is something from the past. It review the project and it was in and then it wasn't in. And um, unfortunately, it got approved in the wrong manner. Um, and oversaw by myself um, and then during construction it was pointed out that it was in violation so we needed to go back and correct it um, 
I think the building is what, 80% complete? Yeah, the building's complete, structurally 80%. We just held off on the uh, completion of the commercial units on the first floor, because that's where we're at when we got contacted by Mike Champa to uh, hit the pause button. Thank you. Um, I would be in favor of reopening it um, if for no other reason than I would you know, prefer not to see a, a, a partially finished building just sit vacant. Um, you know, I realize that we would, as a board, we would have, and we and the applicant would have to sort of work out the details or and come to some sort of agreement, but I would be in favor. Thank you, Steve. I'll turn it back to Jean, as I believe you said that you had a uh, comment that you would like to make. Yeah, just to follow up on Mr. what Mr. Lau said about the compact spaces, the zoning bylaw says the Board of Appeals or Arlington Redevelopment Board is applicable and applicable would be us, may grant a special permit allowing up to 20% of the spaces in a parking lot or garage to be sized for compact cars. So I think it's very mysterious how it ended up with all compact spaces since I don't see anything in the zoning bylaw that would allow all compact spaces. So um, if there was an approval that allowed that, I think it would be a very mysterious approval, I'll say. And it certainly was not something that came before this board for approval. So if, if we opened up the permit, I would want to take a look at the parking and make it consistent. We could share the documentation and, that we have on that. But if, if we open up the permit, I would want to take a look at the parking and make it consistent with the zoning bylaw. Is that an option for you on the site? Um, Retaining walls are built. Yeah. Um, so we're, we are restricted to the retaining walls, but they were built for the plan. I'm not mm -hmm. sure I could take a measurement and see what, because you yeah, guys have I, magic I, math for the spaces, 19 feet or whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to review yeah. the site conditions as they are and, and what the space width requirements and see what we I'm, I'm pretty sure, but people would need to check me, I'm pretty sure that you only require four, not five, parking spaces uh, to meet. If we have the ground floor unit, we would have to have five. Why? Because then you'd have five, but if you only had four residential units, you'd only need four right. parking spaces. Or if you had a, um, and we approved a transportation demand management plan, we could reduce the number of parking places. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a visit with Mr. Danucci and, and field measure the conditions and go through that. Uh, let's see. So it, it sounds like there are four of the members who, and again, I don't want to put words in people's mouths. Can you, would be in, you've stated you'd be in favor of reopening the permit? Yes. Shana, yes, you would be in favor. Um, Steve, I don't know if you made a determination yet, one way or the other. Yes. Yes. And um, Jean, I, I am a yes. You are yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm a maybe. I want to see the documents first. Right. So again, I think, um, and I'm, I'm, um, again, I'm, I'm very concerned with the loss of the second. Business space. Um, given that the rest of the board um, would be interested in, uh, would would be willing to uh, reopen the permit. What I would want to see is to Ken's point before. How can we, if we are to approve a significant reduction in the business? Unit. I think Shana made a great point around the facade and w what opportunities do we have to maximize what is remaining um, because what is shown now certainly is, is not maximizing what's remaining. Um, and then I think we need to define for your questions, Jean, what, um, what we would want to see. And 
Do we need three or four votes to reopen the permit? We need four to to approve. Approve. I think we would only need three to reopen. Actually, this is multifamily. It is. So we need three. Three. Yeah. So you have three. So we have three. So again, but if they come in front of us, I will want to make sure that they are clear on what it is you would like to see. So. Um, I would like to see the same as if you could outline. I think as, that would be if, helpful. If they so were coming, if they were coming in with a new application, I would like to see the same set of materials. This would be study. a right. right. This would be a um, if we're reopening the special permit, it would be for a modification. Modification. So again, I want to be everything that clear. is modified from what we approved. You from want to see that clearly approved. annotated, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is a fair request. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask two more things? Please. Um, now that I think we're leading toward opening up the case and we're talking about this, can you take a look at your uh, bicycle parking? Um, I don't know what happened. It, it sort of grew exponentially for some reason. Um, you got four bicycle parking spaces in front of the unit. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should do that not in front of a unit. It doesn't feel like it's there in front of their front door. No, I, I, I believe that that's a remnant. We'll, we'll revise that. That's a remnant from when it was commercial. Okay. So there was not, so it was not the intent to put four parking spaces in that porch? No. Okay. Uh, uh, Steve, what's the requirement for, uh, for five uh, units and 500 square feet of office? Um, so I believe that's Monty can take a look okay. at that. That's that's yeah. his responsibility. I just think you got too much there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll state yeah, again. We, we've looked at it, but we'll make, I wrote it down, we'll look at it again. I'll say it clear. I'll reiterate, I think I was fairly clear. If you can take a look at re, uh, looking, laying this, these units out such a way where you can maximize the office space on the ground floor better. Mm -hmm. I would very much appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, if you figure a more creative way than I mentioned, more, have more power to you, okay? Um, uh, and um, the other thing is, this was um, approved before our solar uh, was put in place. I apologize. It's okay. It's my blood reading. Okay. <laughs> um, can you check the, with your engineer to see if um, your roof is solar ready and would you be um, okay to maybe put uh, solar panels on 50% of your uh, roof up there? It's, it was not a requirement at, at your approval. But since we're reopening it, I'm just asking you, would you be inter interested in looking at that? Just so, since we're... The know. answer to that is, is yes. It, because, you know, there's a lot of things we can't do at this point, you know, with, with the utilities being in place and the undergrounds being in place and structural being in place. But the roof has some HVAC units on it, as you know, that's where we, you know, yeah. put them. But, um, yeah, as much solar as we could fit if that's something that helps, you know, pull this thing together, then the answer is yes on that. Thank you. Thank you. On the, on the bicycle parking, I don't remember whether our bicycle parking bylaw was in place when we approved this or not. But if it was, if you think it was? I think it was. Yeah, I don't remember. But if it was, the rule for this building would be 1.5 spaces per dwelling unit long term plus 0.1 per dwelling unit short term, which is basically one short term mm. and six long term. And for the offices, it would be, I think, one long term and one short term. But you should double check the zoning bylaw. Yeah, we do, we do have that. I don't know if there's a lot of renditions, but we have the bike storage that yeah, do so run down that corridor and there is yeah. plenty of bike storage you should there. just double check the zoning yeah. by law absolutely yeah. <clears throat> gene i think it was in place already because was uh, it? it was because okay. dave uh remember dave i remember dave yes he was 
uh, he was before Steve, um, that he left after the bicycle thing was. Uh, that's, that's correct. Yeah, we had the bikes, we had the um, car charger plug that was in there, we yep. have that in there. Yep. And we can certainly. If you look at the solar, the solar I, yeah. I appreciate it. No, of course. Yeah, that's something, we'll do anything we can do, and that's something that we could, we could definitely do. Thank you. Uh, so what I would um, propose that we do, Claire, do you have the special permit number handy? If not, I will reference the address in the main motion. Actually, you know what, I do. It's in one of the, the documents here. Let me just pull that up. The recorded, it, it would be in the recorded decision. Give me one second so I can. It's docket 3633. Thank you. 33. Okay, so um, what I would do is, uh, because we have three, three and a half <laughs> board members who are um, in support of, of opening the, uh, reopening the special permit, we will um, take, take a motion to, to reopen the, the special permit. What I'd like to try and do tonight is set a date, um, at which time you would come back to us with the uh, amended documents that you would like the board to consider. Um, so we, what I would like to try and do is set a target date based on our upcoming meeting schedule. If it moves, the world will not end. We can, we can always um, push it to a, a future meeting, but at least that gives us a target to No, to, we'll take your first available and we'll be ready. Okay. Is that the 29th or is that? So our next meeting is August 5th. Okay. You would be ready by that date? Claire, yeah, we need no to advertise. We would need to advertise for reopening. Yeah, I need to check procedurally with yeah. Claire. We would need to re advertise to reopen the permit. So I think the earliest we could do it would be September 9. Oh, God. Because you, you need 30 days? We need it, yeah. Okay. At least. And how far in advance did you, does the board need the plans? I would, so we typically request them at about a week ahead of time. However, I'd like them a little earlier so that Claire can review to make sure that we have everything because again I know you're looking to um, not drag this over several meetings so I want to make sure that the package is complete would you say that's fair Claire that's fair yes September 9th yes September 9th would be the meeting date which means that you would need the meeting materials um, Claire by the 26th of August at the absolute latest at the latest if that's something that you can do Okay, so is there a motion to reopen uh, the special permit for docket number 3633 for 1500 Massachusetts Avenue uh, at a date uh, on the date of September 9th, 2024? So motioned. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Ken? Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? No. And I'm a no as well. We will reopen the special permit on September 9th. Okay. All right. Great. Um, sorry, can I ask one question? Yes. Just, um, is there an opportunity to have a conversation to make, or will there be notes, meeting minutes released? Because I, I know that you From this just, evening? Yes, as soon as possible, just so that we make sure, because I have my notes, but I want to make sure that I've captured every request. Sure, absolutely. So. Um, Claire, I think that's a question for you and your team. Our next meeting is August 5th. We, we can have the minutes turned around by then for sure. And if we have them earlier, I'm happy to forward them along. Awesome. And is this being recorded? By, this meeting is, is also being recorded. It should be online within a few days. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure I, I think I got good notes. I appreciate notes, that. I want to make sure we got everything. Okay. Great. So we will see you back on September 9th. And if um, anything changes uh, regarding that date, please reach out to, to Claire and we will I know. Okay. work with you. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Okay. All right. Uh, so that closes agenda item number two. We will now move to agenda item number three, which is the presentation and discussion of Fox Library Housing Feasibility Study. And I will turn it over to uh, Director Ricker. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can get the presentation, so if Steve can see it. Yes. Can we ask that Thank discussion you. to be moved outside in the hallway? Thank you. I have a question that I think is in the public interest. Um, I'm not sure 
just... Um, sure, you, you're more than welcome to um, remain for our open forum, with, in which case we'd be happy to take any questions yeah. you have. Uh, no. no, open forum is uh, agenda item number five, so we're going to go through our next agenda item, which is our uh, Fox Library housing study. Well, I apologize. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, Claire, I'll hand it over to you. Great. So I'm just going to see if I can get my screen to share with Steve so he can see the presentation as well. St there he goes. Okay, great. Just come up for me. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you for Anna, confirming, Steve. Do you want to come and give the introduction? Um, I'd like to introduce Anna Litton, who's the director of libraries. Uh, she'll be introducing the project. I'm sorry. Could we had a siren, unfortunately, at the same Sorry. time you were introducing our guest. If you wouldn't mind <laughs> just repeating that. Sure. I'd like to welcome uh, Anna Litton, who's our uh, so director we'll of libraries, um, who is going to introduce the project. Thank you so much. Anna Litton, director of libraries. Uh, and I'm very excited to talk about the Fox Branch Library Project. In September 2022, um, as we were preparing for an anticipated release of the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program grant round, uh, I started investigating options for 175 Mass Ave, the Fox Branch Library. The Fox Branch Library was badly in need of a rebuild, remains badly in need of a rebuild. Um, and as part of that project, one of my early questions is, how can we use this public asset to meet other goals of the town, particularly housing goals as laid out in uh, Arlington's housing plan? Looking at the, the site at that stage, I saw an opportunity for Arlington to move in the same direction that community, that Boston was choosing to move in, which was to use the opportunity of redevelopment at a number of branch libraries to find an opportunity to build housing above an existing uh, branch library. I reached out quickly to Claire um, as someone who had information and knowledge about housing that certainly I, as a library director, do not have. And we decided to gather work to develop a feasibility study for the opportunity to develop housing above the Fox Branch Library. I'm very grateful to Claire for all the work that she did, including applying for and receiving One Stop for Growth grant funds, which helped us secure the MAPC team who was working with us on this project. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. So tonight, um, we're going, we just had a great introduction um, from Anna Litton. Um, I'll go through a project overview, starting with the feasibility study project overview itself. Um, we'll look at a couple of case studies quickly with development process scenarios. Then we'll look at development process scenarios that we've seen so far for Fox. And then we'll look at just the process overall um, of how we might um, work through this uh, feasibility work um, to get to uh, the point of construction. Um, so we're working with MAPC. Um, they've been great. Um, they have uh, committed uh, $15,000 in direct local technical assistance to this project, which along with the community planning grant um, has a total project value of over $90,000, $92,400. Um, so our project goals. Initially, we were looking at uh, understanding the feasibility of developing, uh, of course, affordable housing over a new Fox Branch Library. We know that there's a desire to build affordable housing in Arlington. I think the question is, is how much affordable housing could be built above a library given the market conditions and also how the timing of state and federal funding awards might work with the timing of the library build. Um, to understand the municipal capacity to enable a disposition process, this disposition will be tricky, but it's not impossible. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how some of these deals have been structured in New York City and in Boston. Um, we'll engage the public. We're anticipating a few uh, public events to get feedback, including National Night Out, which is the first week of August, and then an open house uh, at the Fox Library the third week of September. And of course, we're always looking to afford affordable housing, expand affordable housing opportunities in Arlington. We do not have a lot of surplus property, so we need to get creative. That's why we're looking um, at potentially an air rights deal over the library. Um, so components of our study have been site analysis, we've looked at the site, some initial case study research, um, financing opportunities, uh, um, the pro, um, some deeper pro forma feasibility analysis, and then as well as community engagement, and then finally um, potentially an implementation uh, plan. Um, we decided 
early on that because it was, it, it, we, we, we just didn't know what was possible or what was feasible above the library, that we would you know, get this project underway in order so that we could get some information to share. Um, and so we're currently in the middle of a little bit of what we're calling a municipal road show. We started with the library board um, and with the manager's office and now we've moved um, to the redevelopment board. We'll also be presenting to the select board and the affordable housing trust. So, has this been done before? Yes, many communities across the country have um, begun to implement projects like this, um, housing above the library. Um, one of the uh, initial uh, precedents we looked at was the Sunset Park Branch Library in Brooklyn, um, which is a 20,000 uh, square foot library with 49 housing units. The way that they did the Sunset Park uh, branch, at least in terms of the deal, is they did, some, they did community visioning, which is sort of where we are right now with our feasibility, study, then they went through an RFP and selection process, appraised the property, and then actually fully transferred the land to the developer for a dollar. The developer was responsible for demolition and then construction of the core and shell. The developer fit out the residential spaces and then the ownership of the library condo section was conveyed back to the city um, for a dollar. The total development cost for this library um, doing it this way as a public-private partnership was about half of what building a um, standalone um, uh, library would have cost uh, the, the city of New York. More recently, the West End Branch Library in Boston, um, they are, this is currently in development. The RFP has been awarded. Um, they're looking to get under construction soon. It's a very similar deal as what um, occurred in New York. Again, with the community visioning, the RFP and selection process, the developer then entered into a long-term ground lease agreement with the town, which is something I think that we are in our feasibility work that we have, uh, and, in, and in speaking with the town manager that we have spoken, uh, or that we have uh, decided is uh, probably the most likely scenario. I don't think anybody uh, here is interested in selling public assets to a developer. Um, however, we are very interested in, in um, you know, other uh, disposition techniques. Um, here's same, the developer owned the demolition and site work, construction of the building core and shell, fit out the residential units, and then the city um, would acquire the condo back. Um, the good news about this, uh, this work um, in the West End and also at a project in Chinatown is our new um, deputy uh, town council worked a lot on the procurement um, and on the disposition for both of those projects, so she is very well versed in some of these. And then third, I wanted to show you, although I don't have as much information on this one is the Upham's Corner uh, Branch Library. This one, an RFP, has also been awarded. It's smaller, um, which I think is more indicative or representative of what could happen um, in Arlington with 17,000 square feet of library space and then 33 housing units. They are looking at affordable home ownership for that project, um, however, and the affordability they're targeting is workforce housing, which I believe is 80 to 120 percent of AMI. Which leads us to the Fox Branch Library. Uh, in concept, what we're looking at is about 14,000 square feet of library space, 13.6, and 15 to 25 housing units. It took us um, a while, it took us a bit of getting into the work of this study um, to arrive at the 15 to 25 number. Um, here's a, a, a programmatic stacking diagram which shows the site area. It's very small, um, 60, uh, about 7,000 square feet. Um, a little less than that. The idea is that the library would be across two floors. There would be a basement. The library would be on the ground um, and second floor with housing above six floors. And they even managed to um, include the little setback there at, at, uh, at the fourth floor in this drawing. Um, a, a potential building program would be a basement space, which is mostly library storage, but some opportunities for tenant storage. Um, then the main library uh, on the first floor with, of course, a residential uh, entry and mail room. Um, second floor would be entirely dedicated to uh, library activities, and then third through six would be residential units with potentially a shared roof deck. Um, roughly a third, of the, a third of the building would be library, and roughly two-thirds of the building um, would be housing. And this is, I think, where we really start to get into um, uh, some of the technical work and some of the um, exam you know, examination of what truly is possible. Um, and so these were some development scenarios that MAPC uh, put together for us, given a unit count of roughly 20. Uh, what are the inputs necessary for feasibility at that, with 20 units? What are the inputs necessary, uh, necessary for affordability, uh, subsidy, and then what market rate units would we need 
um, in each scenario here to, to support um, more and more affordable units. And so when you start all the way to the left, you can see that with our inclusionary zoning, 15% of 20 is three. Um, this would be a scenario where the town would expect some, um, some remuneration, some dollar amount um, for the rights to develop. Um, I think it is uh, unlikely that the town would be able to achieve uh, revenue from these air rights. In fact, I think it is probably a better scenario that the town offer air rights as a subsidy um, to the project. Um, but this at least is uh, a scenario with just some straight ahead affordability. The town, you know, enters into a lease and receives some, you know, revenue from that or the town um, receives some revenue for the air rights initially. And then as we move to the right, you can see the, um, we, we start to get more affordable units at deeper affordability um, as we, um, as we uh, uh, increase the subsidies. So were the town to forego any revenue from the land rights, we're looking at 16 market for affordable at 50%, and then we go from there. You know, if there's a $250,000 contribution, if there's a $750,000 contribution, and again, keeping in mind that we are still, this would still be additive to any subsidy, you know, the, the foregoing of revenue for the town for the land rights. So it gets deeper into affordability. Um, we go from, I think, the eight market unit to the 12 affordable unit scenario is a roughly million dollar contribution from uh, local sources and about $150,000 per unit um, from state sources in terms of affordability. I think what we are likely looking at here is not something, not a scenario that is the, um, the two to the right there, local and state sources including vouchers and local and maximum state resources including vouchers and LIHTC. And the reason that those um, two scenarios are infeasible is because the timing likely will not um, work with the timing of the construction of the library. Um, this would be a situation where an affordable housing developer would go into um, the competition um, for these LIHTC credits and things like that, and we just couldn't, you know, were they not to get them the next year, then the following year, and then, you know, we are, uh, we've run out of the schedule um, potentially for the library. So I think really what we're looking at is a, a healthy contribution from local sources as well as some state um, subsidy, and we're looking at roughly, um, you know, 10-ish affordable units um, out, of, out of 20. Um, something like that. So um, what would a process like this, like what we've sort of seen so far um, in the Brooklyn and in the West End um, examples? So we're here. Um, we're trying to understand our community priorities, um, look at development feasibility, what is our target population. Um, we have talked about veterans housing, we've talked about senior housing, we've talked about other special populations um, potentially, and certainly we have not taken the temperature of the community on any of this at this point, but something like that. You know, is there a target, you know, is there a group that we're looking to, to have um, to have it uh, in those units. Um, outline a clear municipal process. Clearly that is um, going to be challenging. I think crafting the, FR the RFP will be um, you know, quite, the, uh, uh, quite the endeavor. Um, but um, you know, how do we outline our clear municipal process for disposition? You know, what could potentially a town manager do without, select, uh, without, excuse me, town meeting approval? What would we need town meeting approval for? Things like that. Um, Next, we would issue a request for proposals um, and select the development team. Um, at that point, we would also be procuring the design team for the library component, moving into um, uh, design and permitting. This would not, interestingly enough, be an MBTA community's uh, proposal. It would be mixed use, I believe, even though it's also a public building, but we are doing a, uh, a public uh, use on the first two floors, so that is not a residential use on those floors. Um, so we'd have a nice mixed use uh, project there. Um, so project, uh, we would likely go through EDR approval um, and then the design of the library and the design of housing, um, how that works together I think is still TBD um, and then securing the development financing for the housing and then finally under construction you know, do we temporarily locate the, the Fox, um, you know, who is responsible for core and shell construction, who is responsible for library fit out. Uh, we want to know what other questions do you want to have answered, you potentially as part of this feasibility study and the work that we've done um, so far. And um, that's it. Thanks very much. Um
I'm Claire, this is Anna. We also have uh, with us tonight, we have Casey Williams and Alexis Smith from MAPC. Um, here to answer any questions you might have about the presentation or, or any, of, uh, any of the next steps moving forward. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, so really appreciate the uh, thorough work that's gone into to where we are today. It's a very exciting project and I love that we are um, looking at such a um, needed use and a wonderful um, mix of uses for, for this property. So um, to answer, <laughs> to provide some feedback on the question that you pros uh, proposed to the board, I think I'll start off with Steve and then we'll uh, go through the, the board members to um, individually provide some, uh, sure. some feedback. So Steve. So yeah, I, I just had a, uh, I, I think this is, a, I, I've um, long felt that the Fox Library was due for capital investment. Um, I think this is a wonderful project. It's very exciting. Um, a small technical question. Um, inter is, are we looking at potentially having to rezone this property? Um, you know, I, I note that the, it's, a, it's in the B3 Central Business District, which doesn't quite allow enough, it only, which only allows five stories, um, or perhaps uh, per, pursuing this under a comprehensive permit. Although I, I realize that's, a, that's probably a weedy question for this early in the process. Thanks, Steve. I think it is a little early um, in the process, um, but it, we would absolutely consider a rezoning if that's what was, you know, what was necessary. I don't think we could build it any smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, it's useful to know what kind of scale we have to uh, shoot for in order to make it work. Yeah. Um, so th this is very helpful. I'm, 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 I'm quite supportive of what I've heard and uh, look forward to seeing what... Uh, seeing this, you know, kind of uh, play out. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, Gene. Yeah, I think it's great. I actually went on the tour that Library Director Litton did showing us why we needed a new library. It was great. And I'm so glad that town meeting was um, overwhelmingly in support of that. And I think the idea of putting housing and affordable housing on top is terrific. I have the, the same question that Steve had about how is this going to fit in existing zoning? And I can't figure out how it's going to fit in existing zoning. Um, for, you know, it's, it's currently, I think, probably a non-conforming structure. And when you make a non-conforming structure more non-conforming, you go beyond what we're allowed to approve. Um, and also, it's hard to figure out where all the parking is going to be. Um, for I don't think they need parking for the library potentially, but for the units. So um, I think as part of this, there probably should be some sort of zoning analysis done to determine do we need to create a mini PUD or I'm not sure what the best way to proceed is, but we need to figure out, I don't think that's, I could be wrong, because I haven't looked at every one of the zoning classifications, but I don't think it fits into any of them, partially because of the parking, partially mm -hmm. because of the size compared to the size of the lot. Mm -hmm. So we may have to be very creative in what we do to make this happen, and I'm sure we can be. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Uh, Shana. Um, so, so, I also think this is incredibly exciting. Fox is my library, and I have for a long time, um, <laughs> for a long time, uh, hoped for something, uh, <laughs> hoped for some upgrades. And, and um, I have also worked at, I did some work on a West End library proposal. So, I, um, so these are near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm just looking at this site thinking this will be incredibly difficult and I'd love to hear from MAPC a little bit more about how they came to um, those, those numbers, mm -hmm. those, those 20 units, 25 units, and um, yeah. So. Would, would you like to hear from them a little bit more this evening or are you looking to just hear in the, in the future as the project develops? I think in the future as okay. the project develops, um, the yeah, the feasibility of those units um, sort of 
is amazing to me, and I'd, I'd love to see. I'd love to see how that works. Great, thank you, Ken. Uh, well, my fellow um, board members mentioned most of the stuff I want to say already. Uh, one was, uh, this is not zone for six stories. It can't be. It's not in the MBTA. Uh, Gene talked about parking. You're going to have to get some sort of relief for zero parking, right? And I'm assuming you had no parking um, allocated to this project at all. And um, uh, it's going to be very difficult to, to sort of get a developer to, um, um, to get into this uh, proposal. I think that's the way to go as far as um, <clears throat> putting an RFP out and getting interested. I think that is the way you can, you can probably fund it. Mm -hmm. um, the maximum of, of how we can get the most amount of uh, affordable units in there is something that we encourage. I think you, you guys are heading that way. That's good. Um, I want to challenge you guys who are doing this uh, to not think of this as um, traditional housing. Okay, um, I would like you to look at it in terms of, um, it was a big craze at one time, it sort of fell off a favor, but um, um, you know, the, the micro units where you can um, maximize uh, more units and, and uh, look at what look at the, the, uh, the audience you're trying to target okay I think what most people want there is because there's so little front yard backyard parking it's going to be the young professionals that want to get a slice into Arlington and get the, um, some of the life of the street you know the restaurants uh, one or two bars maybe uh, but the atmosphere of the, the lifestyle of the street and being close to Boston so if you, if you target it to the young professionals, you still may be able to capitalize on the income, rent, but the footprint's smaller. You know, uh, maybe you, you introduce community space on per floor. You, you know what I'm talking about. You guys do that, and I'm not going to preach to you guys about design or anything like that, but just I just want to challenge you guys to look at uh, a different way. It's, it doesn't have to be a one-bedroom, two-bedroom unit and uh, that's what that's what we're stuck with you know we have to square up opportunity because of the parameters it is maybe we can take that as an advantage and do something new and unique and now we could be brought up in other cities say look look what Arlington did with this uh, <laughs> with, with their criteria and they did this and did this in order to enable this to happen I would encourage you to make this happen I think it's a great project uh, but um, I think the numbers and the size of this is going to be very difficult. Um, the other projects that you, Claire you showed was much much larger, and um, the rents that they are, that, they, that those areas are located are much much higher. Mm. So it makes it makes uh, that kind of project pencil out. We're going to have to challenge people here to see how we can do that. And that's what I, that's what my encouragement is right now. Great project. Thank you, Ken. Great, thank you. Um, can you remind me when you would be looking to, I think you had a slide very early on with the, the schedule. And the reason I'm asking, I know that um, as a board, we're taking a look at the overall zoning for the Arlington Heights District proposed at 2025 uh, Springtown meeting. Um, and so depending on, again, when this project would move forward, potentially this could be part of what we look at. We've committed to the um, East Arlington Business District Correct. as the next of the business districts right. that we would take a look at. So, um, you know, whether or not that plays into uh, or dovetails well with the timing, that's just something to, to keep in mind both for the board as well as um, as you're starting to look at the at the project with regard to um, feasibility related to zoning mm -hmm. and, and any potential um, creative um, uses. I think East Arlington is such um, a unique business district 
in and of itself, and, and uh, Fox is very much, you know, part of the, the heart of the fabric mm. of that community. It's a very active community, so I'm so pleased to see, you know, all of the public engagement that um, is planned at the outset of this project as well, because I can imagine that um, this will be something that, that quite a few people would want to hear their voices sure. heard in terms of um, expressing the the hopes, the desires, and needs of the of the community. So that was really um, exciting to to see, as well as um, perhaps identifying. I think a bit to Kim's point, um, who the target um, who the target uh, demographics will will be for this, so that if there are some special um, uh, amenities that can be planned for those particular needs that, that we plan for them um, up front, which to me would make this even more of a desirable um, project, again, if we're, if we're really thinking about the, the end users in that kind of comprehensive way. So really excited about the project. Great. Great. One, more one more. Go ahead, Ken. Um, have you guys tried um, CPA funding? That would be part of the funding that we would be seeking, sure. <laughs> I would encourage part you of the, Yeah, the, the local, uh, local contribution, yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments for Claire or the, uh, the team? Great, all right, thank all you right. very much. Actually, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead, Steve. I, I do have one, um, this is sort of uh, an echo to what Mr. Lau said earlier. Um, as someone who's, who's spent a, a good part of his adult life living in small apartments, including ones that were only around 300 years um, you know there is uh, you know, there is a demographic where that you know that kind of configuration makes a whole lot of sense, and it's you know it, it's something that we, we shouldn't forget about. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Great. Oh, sorry. I just had one one other item. I think as we're thinking about this, and this is much further down the down the road, but. Um, I've been really excited about what I'm seeing in other cities with regard to some of the um, bold architectural moves that some libraries are currently making um, to really, again, make this a destination within the community. So I was recently in Washington, D.C., and they have spent a significant, they've really invested in their library system, both architecturally, but specifically on the interiors, thinking about the individual needs of each community right. that the libraries that they've renovated are in, and it's stunning. So instead of going to see the monuments, I actually went to see libraries <laughs> <laughs> in DC because it was so phenomenal. So I, I think that Arlington certainly deserves that type of um, um, really an architectural, um, a unique architectural solution that makes the library and these um, homes that we're going to be developing really a unique and special part of our community as opposed to something you could just find anywhere. Right. So that's my hope. Again, if you're, as you're collecting our, <laughs> our hopes for this project, that would certainly be one of mine. Would that be true even if there's no housing, you would still want the building itself to be? I, I, I guess. If we, if, we are, if we are really reimagining this, please. please. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to be clear that from the outset, my vision of this project is that this is a library first project. The, yes. the space needs of the library need to drive whatever happens next. And uh, we begin by, as, as Fox users know, we actually do use um, subgrade space right now in our damp basement. <laughs> Uh, we, our first order of business really is bringing all of user space above grade. We want to have two beautiful, open, light spaces that, floors, that really invite everyone in the community to use the space. So absolutely, that library space must be uh, an important destination. We are so rich in libraries in this part of the country, in the East Coast, and our residents get to choose where to go to the library, and they chose to live in Arlington. I want people who live here to choose to use Arlington's libraries, and we need the Fox Branch to be part of that. Um, and then we want to build housing that, again, is attractive to everyone who, who wants to live in Arlington, no matter if that comes in at 50 AMI, if it's market rate, whatever. I want that to be attractive and, and beautiful housing for all of our residents. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you.
And we should go on vacation sometime. I too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, anything else? All right, uh, so let's close agenda item number three. Really appreciate um, our, all of our guests for joining us this evening. Um, we'll move to agenda item number four, which is uh, a memo from the director regarding allowed changes to special permits um, in response to our uh, recent discussion with uh, Jim Doherty with regard to the proposed hotel project in Arlington Heights. And I will turn it over to Director Rickert. Thank you very much. So um, at, I, at our June 10th, I believe, meeting, um, the board asked that um, when Mr. Doherty uh, was here giving his update on the Hotel Lexington project, um, he was discussing a few other options should the hotel um, not pan out, not, not be feasible. Um, and the board asked me to work with town council to develop a memo um, about how many and what changes um, uh, Mr. Doherty or potentially another developer could make um, to their project without it requiring a new uh, uh, special permit or a modification of the existing special permit. And the answer in my conversation with Mike Cunningham, the answer is anything that cannot be approved um, administratively, say, the few things that um, me in my position or Mike Champa in his position can do administratively, um, anything that's that would require a permit, a permit modification. So for example, Mr. Doherty was explaining that his uh, restaurant space may not be large enough. Um, something like that, increasing the overall space of the restaurant, slight modifications to the exterior related to that, that can be done via permit uh, modification. However, um, he also mentioned um, trying to extend the second and third floor out over um, the drop-off area, something of that nature would absolutely require a new permit that it would be viewed at as a, as a uh, new project um, and um, something that the public would, uh, again, need to have the maximum opportunity to comment on um, and um, uh, some, yeah, something of that scale that impacts the massing or the siting um, or the overall exterior design of the building, the site plan, um, absolutely would require um, the pursuit of a new permit on, on Mr. Doherty's part. So um, we, as a board, committed to having a, um, a memo back to uh, Mr. Doherty by the end of the month regarding what the parameters are uh, so that he understands, again, um, the I think we, we were <laughs> leading towards the fact that there um, is a small range of uh, especially exterior modifications that the uh, board would consider under the original permit, but again to Director Ricker's point that significant massing, building siting changes, um, the height, for example, he mentioned, um, mm -hmm. perhaps changing the height of the building, um, once we start looking at the envelope as a whole, the massing, the siting, that that would require uh, a new permit. So I wanted the board to make sure that you all had an opportunity to ask any questions. Um, if there are specific um, wording changes, I know, Jean, you may have some, some, some thoughts. You always uh, give us great uh, feedback at times that we would certainly uh, accept those um, either now or um, before this is, is submitted, but I uh, wanted to open this up for uh, discussion. And we'll start with Ken. Okay, let me uh, get this clear. So you listed three things here. Uh, uh, number two, it says residential mixed-use development. So if the hotel doesn't pan out and the restaurant doesn't pan out and they want to put office and retail there, that that would require a new special permit. Correct. Okay. Uh, so if if the restaurant doesn't pan out and they still have the hotel there and have some sort of retail space below, does that need a special permit? If the use is not changing, then it would only require a permanent modification. Excuse me, a permit modification. But if the use changes. If the use does change. Then I think they would need to come back to us because From restaurant to retail. Yes, he would have to come back, but we may be able to do that with the modification. I, no, no, we no. would say that that would not. Excuse be, me, we wouldn't be able to do that okay. with the modification. The use change is a is a new permit. That would be a new permit. Yes, correct. Okay, and then uh, so th those th that was the 
clearest thing I want to make sure is if the restaurant goes away or the hotel goes away, it's a special permit. Correct. A new permit. It's a new permit. He has okay. to come back. Yes, in front because of us. those two working hand in hand together, we approved it in such Correct. a fashion with with its uh, uh, with symmetry and parking and circulation and everything else. And if any one of those changes, you know, um, if the building encroaches forward on the upper floors, right? Yep. That would need a, special, a, new special a new special permit, permit. not a modification. Correct. No. Correct. Okay. Um, so. The only option that he gave us that would not require him to submit a new permit is if the restaurant inside the space grows. He, he gave that as an option. He might want to shrink the lobby and grow the restaurant. That is not a change of use. That is interior to the space, a reconfiguration of the first floor. Okay. And we could review that as a modification in what we've discussed with town council as a modification to the existing special permit. And if he grew out the first floor backwards and create a podium. That is a significant change to the building and the site and he would require a new special, special permit. permit. Okay. I have no questions. Okay. Sheena. Um, I think Ken covered my question. Okay, great. Gene? Uh, Sorry. So I was expecting citations to cases and other things. There's no support, as I can see, for this at all. If you look at our bylaw, if you look at 40A, there's nothing that says how to handle this. I think the word substantial change under those circumstances probably makes sense. But what's substantial, I would say, differs in each particular instance. So maybe just pushing out the second and third floor a foot or two would not be substantial, would not have any substantial impact on anything. And I would say we could just modify the permit. But if he's pushing it out enough so it starts to have a substantial impact, then I think we could say it requires a new permit. So I agree with the substantial, non-substantial piece, but I don't necessarily think this meets what I was hoping for, which was, what's the case law on this? Because if there's no case law on this, then it's our decision, is how I take it. Claire, would, would no you like law. to respond as to whether um, Town Council, and we may have to get back to that because I did not have the conversation yeah. with Town Council whether or not he was able to cite case law. I know you had a more general discussion with him. I had a general discussion with him, and, and to be honest, his comment was any change at all requires either a modification to the permit or. It's well, a, I agree. I agree with that. Right. right? But. However, that's not. I don't think that's how that, that this necessarily works out in practice, and that the board does enjoy some flexibility, and maybe there's some gray area for interpretation. Um, and when it, and I did have a follow, follow a follow up conversation with the chair about the conversation that I'd had with Mike, and we sort of agreed that yes, you know, we we feel like that there's, you know, there's there's some um, there's certainly some room for interpretation. There's certainly room for some flexibility, but not much. Um, I will say that um, town council did offer to write a legal opinion related to another project that this board uh, will be reviewing um, that this board has already taken a look at. It's the Atwood House. It's related to um, the opening and the reopening of the special permit of the Atwood House. That is a, a legal memo that will be written by town council. Right. This was merely my you know, guidance. summary, yeah, his, under his guidance, my summary of the conversation that he and I had had, and then a follow-up conversation with so the chair. So I, I would say we have more flexibility than is indicated here, mm. because we can decide some things are more or less substantial, unless there's some case law that sets the guidelines and parameters. I, again, I think, to what I understand, we have some flexibility there. I see what you're saying. My, my concern is, again, what's considered a substantial change to the FAR, to um, mm. you know, the, the, the height of the, right. of the building. Right. He doesn't that. have a lot of leeway there. No, he doesn't. If, if, the, if the height goes up another story, I yes. think that's Correct. substantial. Right. right. 
So we can certainly, um, and again, I think this is to give him some guidelines. Ultimately, he has to come back to us with what his proposal is. And then we have to decide. And I think what he, um, he was unclear as to the, the, the range of options that he gave us in requesting a modification to the special permit were vast. So I think this narrows him down quite a, quite a bit if, if we all feel comfortable with this. And again, if he would like to come back to us with specific scenarios, then I think we have the ability as a board to review those and just like we did earlier this evening, make the determination as to whether or not that was um, acceptable to the board, that those would be acceptable to the board with regard to reopening the special permit, mm -hmm. if that sits well with the rest of the, the board. All right. Uh, any other comments? Um, again, we, um, Claire, perhaps if we target sending this by the end of the week, and if there sure. are any additional comments or modifications that um, any of the board members would like to see, if you could send you ask, those you to Claire and myself. Yes. I looked you asked Steve. Oh, I'm so sorry, Steve. Did I did I skip you? I've been going no, to you I'm first, so I apologize. Anyway. <laughs> I, I apologize, um, Steve. All right. Um, I, actually, I do have a question because I, I to me, I, I see sort of three options here. Yep. There is sort of what we can um, an alteration that can be made administratively. Uh, there's a possibility of reopening a permit, which would involve um, several hearings, but you know, maybe not necessarily the preparation of a full application submission. And then there is the, you know, the whole new special permit from scratch kind of thing. And I was wondering, uh, I, I think town council's memo doesn't really address the second. And I was wondering if uh, Ms. Ricker had, or other members of the board had thoughts on the like the distinction between new special permit versus what could be done in the scope of reopening and modifying or modifying or reopening an existing one do you want to take that or would you like me you can go ahead okay so um steve i think again your your question is what are the parameters for reopening the, the tight parameters that we see for reopening the special permit mm. You're, you're questioning whether or not we should be clearer about that middle scenario in, in the memo? Uh, it would be nice. A little more sure. clarity there, I think, would be nice. Absolutely. So That's my, my opinion. Right. So I think to the question around if there are changes to um, the, uh, the fenestration, for example, the, the specifications of the, of the fenestration, or... Um, if there are uh, small facade changes to to Jean's, Jean's point, point, one of the floors needs to, um, you know, the one of the floors again without encroaching on any of the <laughs> the, the setbacks or um, uh, step backs that we've already approved. If if something moves a few inches um, or you know a, a foot here or there, that we would consider whether that potentially being something that we could open up, but I don't think that he was speaking to any, again, in the conversation we had, they were much more wholesale changes. So I, I think, again, really being clear that um, within the existing mix of uses that have been approved, altering the allocation of um, floor space between the existing mix of uses or um, minor facade changes would be items that the board would consider for, um, would be good examples to give him for, you know, as, as items that the board would consider for the option where we consider reopening the special permit. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair, that, that helps, that helps. Thank you, great, thank you. Uh, any other questions, comments? All right, so we will, um, again, aim to send this by the end of the week. Any, anything that you um, would like to discuss between now and then, um, please, please send your thoughts to Claire and to myself. Thank you. Thank you, Claire, for drafting this memo. Sure. All right, that 
concludes uh, item, uh, agenda item number four. Uh, we'll now move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So uh, anyone would like to speak this evening, please uh, indicate so by raising your hand. Okay. If, if you would, please, please come forward. Um, and um, you, uh, if you could please introduce yourself by your first last name, and uh, you'd have up to three minutes to speak. I won't take too long. Um, Asha Kapka. Precinct 1. Do I need to give my address? Please. Oh, 17 Silk Street. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm interested in the last project as well. Um, and I know that the project has been kind of stale and sitting. Um, I know one large business just left Arlington. Um, and I urge you not to give up on the idea of the hotel, the boutique hotel. And maybe, um, I don't know exact details of this developer's situation, but me, I don't know if he's qualified to maybe pursue this project, if there's any way to propose this property to another person who's qualified or maybe experienced in this type of business, because we desperately need business revenue and you know, that kind of builds the collective community that we really need. And um, another question that I had earlier was um, regarding, that's what brought me here is the trees. You know, it's really hot right now. I'm concerned about environment and um, I was concerned about a large number of trees uh, that were gone from the 1500 Mass Ave. Um, I enjoyed talking to the developer because I've never been, but before he said he only cut two trees on the strip of the land that belongs to the abattoir. Um, it was quite a big number, I believe it was 12 trees. Um, and I was very much concerned that opposite of that property, just a little further down, there was a project that um, uh, removed 80 trees. It was clear cut, 80 trees. Not even one tree was saved to build a development. Um, I am very concerned about uh, the, the tree canopy diminishing and our tree health in just in town is not really great. And I hope that when you consider these particular projects or maybe upcoming projects, you keep that in mind that, you know, five trees there, 20 trees here, 80 trees there, it really makes a big difference. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and uh, the board certainly is very, very supportive of this hotel project and does hope that it uh, goes forward. So appreciate your comments. Um, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Okay. Uh, with that, we will close open forum and uh, open number uh, agenda item number six, which is new business. And I'll turn it over uh, to Director Ricker for uh, anything that you might have. All right. I have no new business at this time. Thank you. Great. Um, Ken, please. Um, what's the status of 881? 882. Two, sorry. 882, he is still, uh, I believe, uh, look, I haven't checked in with him for a minute. I'll have to follow up with him. But I believe he is still in the process of painting. Um, I haven't had a chance to go out there and look at the lights, Gene, that you have the issue with. And he needs to give us a lighting plan. And he needs to give you a lighting plan. That's right. I'll have to follow up with him again, Ken. Well, when you say he's in the midst of repainting the building, is he going to repaint the building what was approved, or what he he's going to repaint whatever he wants to repaint? Did he just re because he hasn't fully repainted? Yes, I don't think he's approved. painted anything. Uh, I think the building was painted in whatever whatever that architect decided to paint at that time it was not the approval. The cornices, the accent marks, the, the storefronts down below, a whole bunch of stuff that was just done, um, not part of the approval process. And um, uh, the dryer vents, all sorts of stuff that, you know. Still, still, still hanging out there. Still out there, and it's it's a very prominent site. It's right on Mass Ave, yeah. right on Mass Ave, you know. And uh, I, I just don't see it moving anywhere. And the lack of commitment of him coming in and talking to us and say, "Hey, what do you want to make you guys happy?" Yeah. And there's there's none whatsoever. Right. And um, and I just wondering, is there an issue? 
I, not, there's no issue that I'm aware of at this time. I, I think just, I just haven't had the opportunity to follow up with him. Okay, well, I, I think the opportunity is for him to follow up with us because he's in violation. Doesn't not, matter. Nothing to do with you. Right. Okay. Um, that's, I want to make it perfectly clear on his part. It's not our part to trace him down. Um, that was one part. That's one thing. Sure. And then the other one was um, uh, at the beginning of the summer or sometime, we talked about uh, maybe finding some PUD projects or PUD. Uh, projects that we might be interested in looking at around Arlington. One did come up was uh, right along the, um, the bike path where it crosses the parking lot on one side and there's a park there, a couple open fields. Is it Lane? I, uh, I don't think it's Park Lane. I think it's where the, the crew has their... Um, rowing shells? Rowing sh shells in a little hut there. There's a big open lot right there on one side of the uh, parking lot, which is grass right now. And we had one time talked about potentially studying was moving the parking that was on the other side of the bike path onto this side and putting that park back on the other side and making the park that was on the lake side a bit more continuous. Or well, look at that. I'm not saying that's what we want to do. Say we, that's something we were interested in looking at as uh, as a project, uh, as a redevelopment project that we might be interested in, and then to, uh, maybe some housing that can go in there because that's one of the available lots, I believe, that we actually control, that, that uh, the city owns, right, or the town owns. Right. So. I think that there were um, a few parcels that the Redevelopment Board indicated there was an interest in. Mm -hmm. um, that parcel, obviously, working together potentially with the MBTA for the bus turnaround lot, Russell Common lot. I mean, there, there were several. Yes. I haven't got there yet, but yeah. Right. Um, so I think um, what would be, what may be helpful is if we um, align, again, we have the Fox Library Housing Feasibility Study. We have the rezoning right now of um, Arlington Heights, which we need to move forward with kicking off the master plan. So I think realistically, um, if the board is interested in pursuing a um, redevelopment project that we need to align on a project um, or a priority of projects and then speak with others within the town before we commit to moving forward with, with anything specific, mm -hmm. specifically, right? Yeah. And you brought up the point of the MBT turnaround. We, we had a lead. Turnaround. I'm not sure what happened to that lead. I, I have, I have, a, I have a, a lead. I, the, I, I can call the director of TOD. Okay. Um, I don't know how, again, what we have heard about the bus turnaround when we've called is that this is absolutely not a priority trip for the MBTA. Um, and they have told us that in no uncertain terms, but we continue to push. We just received our license for our mural on the building, and so that'll go on. Um, but it, ha it is challenging to get anybody over there to engage in this in any kind of, like, sustained way. Well, don't we have a governor that's a resident here? That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, um... I'll call it Mora. But I, I, think, I think that that's a bigger discussion that perhaps we could... Um, we could prioritize it at our next board retreat. Oh, yeah. I think we made a commitment to go to town meeting in the upcoming spring with the rezoning of Arlington Heights. Correct. So I think that has to be a priority. Correct. And then we made a commitment to do East Arlington next. Correct. And I think that has to be the commitment afterwards. So I think, and there's the update to the master plan. So I think if we were going to list the priorities, those three would be up at the top. And I, you know, we've talked about what to do about Russell Common in the area across Mystic Street mm -hmm. from Russell Common, but it's a matter of priorities, I think. Great. I am all for that, as long as it's, we're moving forward somewhere. Yes. Anything else, Ken? No, I'm sorry. I'm That's okay. 
Any other uh, new business items? Shana? Nothing. Gene? No. Steve? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I have two. Um, number one, I read through the Attorney General's decision uh, letter regarding our MBTA zoning bylaw, or MB, our Section 3A district. And I noticed that the AG's office Steve, suggests a lot of we, Steve, we have a lot of feedback. Is there? Is, uh, oh, is this any better? No, no, no. Hello? Okay, don't move. Nope. Okay. Nope. So regarding the nope. AG's decision nope. on the Steve, MBTA we zoning. Can't hear, sorry, Steve, we can't hear any, anything. It's just, it's just feedback. In that case, I'll pass. Okay, sorry. We, we'll follow up afterwards. I'm sorry. We're just getting feedback. Um, I just have one item um, to mention ahead of the, uh, the um, Atwood House property coming back to us. I know that there was a, um, a petition that was um, that was uh, circulated regarding uh, people who were interested in um, retaining the Scotch Pine tree on that property. Um, I just wanted to state for the record that uh, somebody um, spoofed my town email address and added me to the petition. Whoa. So I um, certainly am in question of the veracity of that petition as a whole. So I, um, I do not condone the um, impersonation of a town official using our, um, our uh, email address or any of our identification. Um, and I just wanted the other board members to be aware of that and for um, anyone involved in the petition to understand what was happening. Were any of us on it other than you? I received an email thanking me for signing the petition uh, to my town email address and, wow. and went on to, um, um, you know, again, deal, deal with the um, erroneous I didn't, I didn't use of mine. I didn't get a thank you note, Gene, so. Neither, no, neither did I. So, right. so I just wanted, wow. wanted to state that for the record, um, should that become something that is um, put in front of us that that, um, there, there have been some um, challenges with the way that that has been run. Um, anything else as new business? Okay. Uh, is there, I believe that that, uh, excuse me, let me just go back to our agenda. I believe that that closes uh, agenda item number six, and I will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ken? Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all. Appreciate you joining us. Have a Thank good you. night. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.